Yeah, our primary targets, I think most all of them were in connection with troop movements, trying to soften up an area ahead of them, or, uh, or maybe a gather a bunch of tanks or something, wipe them out, or, or if the Germans were trying to get get uh, stuff up to their troops, try to knock them out, uh, railroad marshalling yards and, and things like that. Uh, uh, every, everything we did had something to do with what, what the troops wanted to do, try to make it easier for them. We had a bulletin board that we looked at every day and, and it told us what our next mission was but it was usually like we look at it in the morning and you had a mission in the afternoon, or you look at it in the evening, you had a mission in the morning, you had one at night or or something. That, you know, it, it wasn't long between when you saw the orders on the bulletin board that the mission would take place. <coughs> and your briefings, did they take place in a tent with all the pilots or was it something that was just posted and you were well most of them were outside but they, they had a bulletin board with maps and and they would tell us where the flak would be where they thought the flak would be sometimes they weren't accurate on that <coughs> but uh, they told us all they knew and told us what the weather would be. And, uh, but our, our missions weren't very long, maybe two to four hours. It wasn't like these uh, heavy bombers were, you know, they were gone long hours. <coughs> and there were more of them on a mission too. We'd have we'd have at least a box, at least six planes on a mission, or we'd have as many as as six boxes on a mission, depending on what the target was and how how many bombs they wanted to drop. One one thing they uh, if they wanted they didn't have a lot of choice of bombs, but they made. Uh, right there on the field, they they made uh, anti-personnel bombs by putting what they called sticks on the fuse. They would take a fuse and weld uh, about a quarter of an inch diameter or five sixteenths inch diameter rod on the end, maybe from that long to about that long, put a little metal pad on the end of it, and then when they screwed that fuse into the bomb, you had this stick on it, when the bomb hit the ground, the bomb would go off in the air above the surface. It was uh, amazing that they did all of that right right there in the, on the desert. Weld those rods on and weld those pads on. They had uh, they'd set up a tent uh, that they used at night as a, for all the photography they did. did they, uh, they developed all their film and, and stuff in, in, in this tent out on the desert. And if you had a camera, which uh, when they le we left the States, we weren't supposed to have, but many of us did. Um, and if we could get film for it, they would develop it for us. Of course, most of what they developed, and you'll see on, on some of those pictures I gave you, um, a, a lot of little dust the particles <laughs> as hard as they tried they couldn't keep the dust off of the <laughs> the film <laughs>